Hey, hey, before we jump in, I wanted to let you know we have our final Podcasting for Profitability Roundtable of 2024 coming up. August 14th, we are coming together for the last time for this free call this year, and I want to see you there. This call is built for the people in the room, so be sure to sign up and submit your question and join us live August 14th. You can get all the details and reserve your seat at uncommonlymore.com slash roundtable. Last week, we kicked off our series on podcast housekeeping. Today, we check in on the second part of our show, our outro. Let's get into it. Welcome to the More Profitable Podcast with Stacey Harris. I'm Stacey, and this is the spot to learn more about the strategies, tactics, and tools you need to build your more profitable podcast. My team and I work every day with podcasters like you to shift shows from frustrating time sucks to productive members of your sales team, because your show should be built to generate and convert leads. So let's get into it. Week two of our podcast housekeeping series. I'm really stoked because we're talking about outros today. Last week we talked about intros and today we're talking about outros. And what I want you to think about is these two episodes together. So a lot of what we talked about last week is going to apply to this week. And a lot of what we're going to talk about this week, you'll actually be able to sort of reverse and apply to that as well. Before we dig into that, I want to remind you if you haven't yet signed up for the podcast newsroom. Make sure you have. We, of course, have new episodes monthly. If you haven't yet, podcastnewsroom.com is the place to get on that list and get access to, again, that private but completely free secondary podcast where we just, we dig a little deeper than we do on this show. We talk about what's happening right, right now. This show, batched months in advance now because we're working on a whole new thing. That show I record literally the day it goes out. So it's it's fresh. It's what's happening now. If you haven't yet, again, podcastnewsroom.com is the place to go to get that access. Let's dig into podcast outros and crafting the perfect podcast outro. Let's start like we did last week by talking about how frequently this needs to be changed. Again, I'm going to recommend at least annually digging into this, but for a slightly different reason than we talked about with our intro. Oftentimes with our outro, we're getting our best listeners. We're getting our most interested leads paying attention to the outro. Everybody is listening to the intro. We're using that intro to, again, buy enough trust to keep you listening. But with our outro, if you've made it here, you care. The outro to this show is positioned the way it is because of this. If you listen to the outro of the show, and hilariously, this will be the one episode everybody listens to the outro of the show uh, because it's literally the episode. But the outro to this show, I talk about if you made it to this point, which is statistically unlikely, let's just talk. Let's have a conversation. Because if you made it here, you clearly care. And that is because it's so true, so Few listeners last all the way to the end, much less through the outro. You want to make sure that that piece of real estate, which is highly valuable, is doing what you need it to do. So let's first talk about the goals of our outro. It's going to depend how much you need to put on your outro on how you're promoting in the rest of your episode. So this is where some format comes into play. And this is something we don't have in play in the intro as much. Because again, in the intro, we're buying enough trust to keep you listening. With our outro, we really have a conversion point. We really have a, okay, so this thing that I, I bought your trust, you listened to the whole thing. Now what's next? Now what's going to keep you from just continuing to listen to whatever shows up next in your podcast player? And so we need to be thoughtful about this. And there's a couple of variations that can happen here because of that. One, you could have a different promo depending on your promotional season. Two, you could have a standard outro that plays all the time that is sort of a catch-all because your time-sensitive call to action exists before it. Three, your call to action is really focused on almost a downsell because again, you have a purchase opportunity call to action in your content. 
Let's talk through these. That first one, if you're not giving them some next step in the content, you've got to make sure that that outro is doing it. And I'm not just talking about subscribe and leave five stars. I'm talking about getting them out of the podcast player. I'm talking about putting them in your world, inviting them to your house, your party. So what does that look like? Text to subscribe to my email list, head over to a URL and get on my email list. In our case, we have one singular offer, podcast production. It's the only thing open all the time. We've got podcast strategy intensives that we open here and there, but the only thing available all the time is podcast production. It is the center offer of this company, this business, and this show. And so in our outro, we're just talking about that. If you made it to this point, let's do this. Let's have a conversation about what this looks like for you. And then I wrap it up. What I want you to be looking at is... Can I use this almost as a safety net for my call to action? If nothing else, if in no other place I told you what to do next, here's where you're doing it. Number two, maybe it's a little softer. Maybe you know pretty consistently you have some sort of time-sensitive call to action happening that you do live in the show. You'll notice I do a live call to action in this show. I always tell you in the format of the content, what to do. And then we start the outro with a reminder that's like, no, really, let's do this. You made it to this point in the show. And so my outro is built to really support that live outro. But it doesn't have to be a particularly aggressive pitch. I don't have to be particularly strong-armed in that outro because, again, it's supporting an outro or it's supporting a promo, rather, that I've already said live in the content. The other way I could do this, I don't have it, but I could structure it as, again, almost like a downsell. So the promo was, hey, let's talk about podcast production. And then I could, in our outro, have the podcast newsroom. So like maybe now is not the right time for podcast production. If you love the show and you want to take our relationship a step further, make sure you are on the inside with the podcast newsroom. That was really bad copy, but you know what I'm saying. And so you can position that instead of a reinforcement of the offer, which is how ours is set up, you could set it up almost as an alternative. If this doesn't work, how about this? Uh, a great way to think about this is if you have a, like a membership that's open all the time, but you also do one-on-one coaching, your live, you know, in the content call to action could be that one-on-one coaching. And then you could have a pre-recorded outro that plays at the end of your episodes that reminds them, hey, if what we talked about today, blah, 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 join us in blah, 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 blah. That's sort of the third way to be structuring this. Notice in all three of these options, though, we sent them somewhere besides another episode. As delightful as it is to create binge-worthy content, and I am proud to be somebody who gets told regularly that, that people binge this show, the show is not structured to point you to another episode. This show is not Netflix. It's not the only thing I want you to do is keep listening here. Because keep listening here doesn't change a whole lot. Keep listening here doesn't reach our goals of you making more money from your podcast. You seeing more sales, seeing more leads from your podcast. That doesn't happen if you just go listen to another episode of the show. Where that happens is if you go and do a thing. That's why these episodes, this housekeeping housekeeping series is structured the way it is. Because I want you to go and do a thing. I don't want you to spend 45 minutes listening to me. I want you to spend 15 minutes listening to me and 30 minutes taking action. That's your 45 minutes. And so my call to action is not subscribe and listen to six more episodes of the show. My call to action is go someplace else and then essentially raise your hand. Opt in. Tell me you're here. Connect with me on social. Tell me you're here. Buy a thing. Tell me you're here. And that's how I measure the metrics of the show. That's how I measure the success of my show is how frequently is that happening? 
That's the goal of your outro is to move them outside of the content. Let's talk logistics now. What are some of the logistics we need to be aware of as we craft this perfect outro, right? Timing, 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 timing. Just like our intro, we're keeping it short. This should be 60 to 90 seconds. This should not be four, five, 10, 12 minutes. This should not be more than the core part of your content was. This should be actionable. This should be the next step. Again, almost no one is going to listen to this, which means it needs to be really good because the people who are listening to it care. The people who are listening to it are invested. And so it needs to be thoughtfully crafted for them to do the damn thing. All right, let's talk about some do's and don'ts on our outro. Do continue to make this about them. Don't make it only about them. Because we've made it about them the whole show. This whole show has been about the listener. And the outro is too. Your call to action is too. But it's about what they need to do next. And so it needs to come instead about them, about us. It needs to become about both of you. I'm going to continue to use this show as an example because it's the only thing I know you've listened to. Uh, With this show, it shifts from being about just you to being about us. If you've listened to this point, it's time for us to have a conversation. If you've made it here, it's time for us to talk. I want us to connect so that we can partner, so that we can create this thing moving forward. Don't list off literally everything they could do. I see this mistake made not just in outros, but also when you go to wrap up a podcast interview, let's say you're on somebody's show and they ask, okay, great. Well, what, you know, if, if, you know, the listener really resonated with this, where should they go next to find you? And then you proceed to list off 47 things. Your outro cannot be structured like that. The wrap-up of your interview cannot be structured like that. Where do you want them to go? What is the one thing they're supposed to do next? This is why when I talk about podcast interviews, I talk so much about having like a resource page or a go-to opt-in. Have them go to one thing. In your outro, it should again be have them go to one thing. It should not be you could call me, you could email me, you could send a carrier pigeon, you could buy this offer or this offer or this offer or join this program or attend this event or no. No. It's here's what's next. And this is why having a couple versions of this outro might be beneficial to you because in different seasons, that outro might be different. So you might be and very likely will be changing this more frequently than you are your introduction. Your intro is going to probably stay more consistent than your outro, especially if you're somebody who has different sales offers in different seasons of the business. If you've got a couple of ways to work with you, this might change depending on what you have open at that time. And that's cool, but it can't be all of the things every episode. It needs to be one thing each episode. And if you want to have different calls to action in your episode, that's cool. That's absolutely fine. But what we're talking about now is your outro. You'll notice there are almost always at least two options, calls to action in this show. At the beginning, we talk about the newsroom. At the end, we talk about generally production, but occasionally something else. This series, we've been talking about those podcast strategy intensives because that's what we're talking about right now. That's what we're working towards right now. And so I want you to be thinking about what's the one thing I want them to go do after this bit of content. After this thing we talked about, what is the thing they do next? And if you don't know what that is, you need to rework the episode, not the outro. As we wrap up today's episode, I do want to remind you that that we have the opportunity to talk about this more directly inside our podcast strategy intensives. These are the kind of things we're covering in the podcast audit. I'm listening at intros. I'm listening to outros. I'm listening to call to actions. And I am identifying some places where we could see improvement, help you re-script, help you make shifts. And so head over to uncommonlymore.com slash intensive and grab your spot at one of those uh, podcast strategy intensives, and we'll we'll talk about this together. All right.
All right. I will see you next week for part three. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Remember that content consumption does not make changes. So commit to doing something from today's episode. Maybe it's taking action on what we talked about. Maybe it's reaching out to me and learning more about podcast strategy intensives or what podcast production looks like with our team. All of that is over at uncommonlymore.com. And if you haven't yet signed up for the podcast newsroom, I want to remind you that is a great next step. If you're not really sure what comes next, hang out over there, get those exclusive private episodes. That's over at podcastnewsroom.com. And the last favor I will ask, because social proof is endlessly important for sure, is to leave a rating or review for the show. If you go to ratethispodcast.com slash more, that's the easiest way to do it. But I would love to hear what you thought of the show, what you think of the show, and if the show has been helpful for you. I can't wait to chat with you. So this is just the start of the conversation. Reach out so we can keep it going. Talk soon.